Wait a minute. A check on Daly. Here it is. The, oh, dear me. Dear me. There was no opportunity to learn from the written word, no shop classes to feed his interest in manual matters, nothing except in Wilfred Landry's own wi will to succeed his own curiosity to spur him on. He says he learned by observing others, listening to conversations and manners of expressions. He learned everything, including self-discipline, the hard way. He is, he'll tell you that, his fond, that he had a fondness for drink when he was a young man, and how he simply took a good look at himself one day and decided that the temptation wasn't worth the price. He quit. I never knew he ever drank. Now, let me see where we are. Today, he says with a twi uh, twinkle, oh, alcohol isn't all bad. I keep a little in the house, but that is different from heavy drinking. He is not a preachy senior uh, citizen, but will simply share his hard-won knowledge when he feels it's called for. For example, he is fond of repeating, you better take care of yourselves. Nobody else will. Happy 98th birthday year, Wilfred Landry, and many more of them to you, says Janet. Take care of yourself. I've got to stop. Well, that ends the article about uh, Wilfred Landry. Now, uh, in the irregular uh, for October 18th, 1977, there was an article which the big uh, headliner says, when Bartlett was a railroad boom town. Now, there are two pictures of uh, the uh, Bartlett uh, railroad station. One is the train pulling up at the station, and the other one is a picture of the, um, a very good picture of the station itself, and in the far background, a train just coming in. This article is by Bart Bachman, I guess is the way that is pronounced, B-A-C-H-M-A-N. Where once an elaborate train station stood, there is now nothing more than a couple of dull colored shacks. The green engine house, which once served as a locomotive stall, is now used for the storage of road salts for the winter. Boys kick soccer balls against it on Sunday afternoons. These are the remnants of an era gone by in the village of Bartlett, New Hampshire. When American Railroad was at its peak in the 1920s, Bartlett was the center of activity in the eastern White Mountains. It was the primary passenger depot in the region at a time when trains were virtually the only mode of transportation in the entire country. Upper-class vacationers would stop there with six or eight trunks of clothing apiece and stay for weeks. The old Bartlett Hotel, where most of them stayed, still caters to visitors. Horse-drawn carriages once provided a scenic tour service. And all this took place some 30 years before the first North Conway Motel was ever constructed. Area growth seems to have left Bartlett far behind now. North Conway has been the center of the commercial boom the past 25 years. Bartlett has pretty much stayed the way time has left it. The old folks are getting older and new generations are being born. But the town, for the most part, uh, still remains a product of yesterday. Most of the structures and houses are the same ones that were there half a century ago. Someone once referred to it as the pioneer town. It is inhabited by deep-rooted villagers whose fathers and grandfathers cut trees to settle there many years before. 
They take great pride in their past and in their legacy. And the era of prosperity that they now reflect on with a great deal of fondness was centered around the railroad activities of the late 1800s and the early 1900s. The first railroad to make its way through Bartlett and Crawford Notch was the Portland and Ogdensburg Berg Railroad. It was constructed for the sake of providing a gateway of commerce between the Great Lake, uh, between the Atlantic Ocean and the Great Lakes. It was completed in 1875 to St. Johnsbury, Vermont, at which point connections farther west and northward to Canada are made. Bartlett served as a vital halfway point in the route. From that point westward, an elevation climb through Crawford Notch was 680 feet to 1900 feet and is experienced as one of the steepest railing upgrades in the entire eastern United States. Bartlett served as the inspection and maintenance point, uh, point before the climb. Several locomotives were also added on there to help push and deliver the train through the notch. Therefore, of the 700 Bartlett residents at that time, most of them were railroad men working on the maintenance and locomotive teams and their families were there with them. At about that same time in the late 1800s, another railroad used Bartlett as a terminus. It was a logging railroad extending from Albany, just outside Conway, to Bartlett, where a lumber company then existed. Loggers were stripping the timberland along what is now the scenic Cancamagas Highway and shipping it by railroad to the lumber company in Bartlett. When citizens stepped in and persuaded the federal government to buy and preserve that forest territory, the logging and lumber operation was forced to close down. But during its short live tenure, it too was a source of employment for many Bartlett people. The Portland and Ogdensburg Berg Railroad, meanwhile, continued to prosper and Bartlett prospered right along with it. The railroad helped support Maine's growing paper industry and the paper industry in turn helped support the railroad. Chemicals and pulp and other paper making materials were coming into the state by way of railroad and finished paper products were going out the same way. A passenger service was one of the biggest features of the railway. Of the approximately six trains traveling each way each day, four of them were passenger commutes. Before the paving of the main roads and the coming of the automobile to the region in the late 1920, residents of the White Mountains relied on the train to get from one village to another. And for people throughout the Northeast, the railroad opened up new and exciting travel opportunities. 85-year-old Stella Bergeron, who was born and raised in Bartlett, remembers those early days. Her husband was a train conductor, and for that reason, she was given a free pass on the passenger service. We used to ride the train up to St. Johnsbury to shop, she says, and we would buy more in an hour there than we could buy in a day here. I still have my pass as a matter of fact, she said. Now that is not that it would do me any good now, but it's still nice to keep it. The Bartlett Station, some station house at that time was large and elaborate. It was open 24 hours a day with a restaurant, telegraph operators, upstairs offices, and rooms for some of the trainmen to sleep in. 
It burned down sometime in the early 1920s, and a smaller one was constructed almost immediately. In the 1950s, after the automobile had pushed the passenger service out of operation, the smallest train station was sold to a local ski club. And in a matter of years, that one too was destroyed by fire. When railroading was at its peak, however, most of the Bartlett, Bartlett community was comprised of train men and their families. Because so many trains, about 12 a day, use Bartlett as a maintenance stop, a great number of railroad employees were stationed there. But when railroading began its decline, simultaneously throughout America, many of the railroad employees in Bartlett picked up stakes and moved elsewhere. And with them went the local barber shop, the rum shop, the doctor, and the minister who had established themselves there to accommodate the railroad activity and its Bartlett-based workers. The main central railroad took over Portland and Ogdensburg in 1888 and has controlled the franchise ever since. It stopped providing passenger service completely around 1960 because of a tremendous financial loss, according to Maine Central Executive Bradford Peters. We were losing millions a year, he said, and the patronage was very sparse. The railroad does continue to be a great asset to Maine's paper industry, however. What kept us alive, says Peters, is the economic growth of this region and the whole country. The trucking industry has taken over a large share of the freight haul. But what it comes down to, says Peters, is that there is more freight and material to be hauled today than ever before, and the trucking industry cannot handle it alone. So, in the railroad's transport of paper products and materials to and from Portland, Bartlett still is today an important inspection stop along the main central route. Instead of a dozen trains coming through each day, however, there is now only two, and only a handful of maintenance men is required. Some live in houses in Bartlett Village, but most live in the refurbished passenger car situated at the Bear Notch Road crossroads. Now I have to turn to uh, page one to finish this article, just a moment. <laughs> 